We're gonna go into the four best exercises to improve your snatch, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning about strength and conditioning, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna be a better coach, you wanna have a better snatch, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a beast. Dave, my snatch sucks. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. What can I do to get better? I'm just stuck at this plateau. These are questions and these are scenarios that go through every coach's communication with their athletes. And a lot of athletes will just constantly sit there and wallow around with, what can I do to get better? And the big thing that we've got to do is initially understand what the snatch is. We know what we need to do from the floor to the knee. So right off the floor, we've got to clear those knees back. When the bar goes from below the knee, around the knee, we call that no man's land. That's where most lifts are lost. So we have to understand what are we doing with that technical perspective? This is where our technical model comes into play. So if we know what our technique is supposed to look like, we know what to do through no man's land. And then as we get out of no man's land and get into the reciprocation point where our knees come forward and we hold the heels flat, we keep that chest forward. And then as we start to raise our chest, now that bar gets into the hip. And then what do we do from the hip into that catch position? So we've got to know what the technical model is. We've got to break it down into all of those little parts. And then that key becomes, all right, where is our athlete? Where is the whiner? Where is the person who's complaining about their snatch? Where are they losing the lift, right? So oftentimes with the snatch, it's not about strength. It's almost always about the technique. It's almost always about the movement. It's a very finicky movement. It's very, very receptive to errors. And if we can think about our technical model here, Quo, right? Quo went out and she missed her second lift in the 2019 World Championships at 106 kilos. And that miss looked almost exactly like her successful lift on the third attempt. So when you put that 106 miss next to the 106 make, you can barely see where the errors are. And that's what happens in the realm of the snatch world, right? It's a very precise movement. So when it comes down to it, it's very, very rarely going to be a strength related issue. It's almost always going to be technique based. So now let's go into that first position right off the floor. We've got to think about it. We want those knees to clear back, but what can we do to really make sure that that liftoff position is a success? And so a lot of lifters tend to bump the bar forward right off the floor, and then that puts them out of position. They start to get on their toes a little bit early. So what lift can we do? I like to do pause at that liftoff off so you can almost go about two to three inches you can lift off pause one two try and feel those knees coming back and then you're going to lower it back down to the floor get reset and then go into that full snatch position now the key is that we want to execute that full snatch we want to execute the lift off for the full snatch the exact same way that we executed that lift off when we can do that we start to feel a little bit better so if your lifter tends to bump that bar forward just by teaching them that proper position at the lift off now that's going to transfer into better lifts and they're going to be more successful if they tend to miss those lifts by bumping the bar forward at the lift off now that next position where we see a lot of misses tends to be right below the knee, okay? And the big key part here is that when we're right below the knee, we need to make sure that if the bar is directly below the knee, right around that patellar tendon, the knees need to be over top of the heels. So the lift that I love to utilize to teach this good position is a low hang with a pause below the knee. So we're gonna lift that bar up, we're gonna lower down below the knee, and then we're gonna pause right below the knee. The reason why a lot of lifters miss at this position is because they tend to keep those knees forward. So now if we throw that pause in, we want to teach them how to feel their hamstrings engage with the knees back, with those knees cleared back. I like to utilize about a two to three second pause right below the knee. As we pause there, as they come out of that pause, we wanna see the knees come forward and that's gonna help keep the bar nice and tight through no man's land. And then as they get into their hip, they're gonna still be holding that flat foot position. So I like that low hang snatch with a pause below the knee. That's gonna help drastically improve that position right below the knee. It's gonna help teach the lifter how to load their hamstrings when their knees clear back, which is in turn going to lead to a much 
bigger finish because their hamstrings are nice and loaded. Now that third position that we're gonna look for is gonna be the reciprocation point, so just above the knee all the way into the hip. And this tends to be a serious problem area for athletes that tend to keep their knees back. When they keep their knees back for too long, there's gonna be a little bit of a gapping issue between the bar and their thighs. And that's when we start to see guys get way behind the bar. So they're either bend their arms or their chest will get way behind the bar because that's what's gonna bring the bar into their hip. That's when guys tend to bruise on their pubic bone and women and the one key factor here is they don't know what that feeling is like to have their knees clear back and then reciprocate forward it's a little stretch reflex okay so what we like to do is we like to work this position from two boxes okay now a lot of lifters might be a little bit tall if we've got two boxes that in each box is seven inches it might only be 14 to 16 inches but what i like to have is i want that bar to be just above the kneecap so right around that reciprocation point and what this does is it forces the knees underneath the bar and what ends up happening is if we can start from that position where the bar is already past the knee it helps the lifter learn how to get their hips underneath the chest and to extend vertically through their heels if you have a lifter who tends to get their chest way behind the bar the two box snatch is going to show us that they're looping all over the place they're inconsistent with this position now over time as they start to feel their knees being underneath the bar and their knees are forward while their heels are grounded and their chest is grounded it's going to transfer really really well to big monster lifts off of two boxes this is something that we did with jake horse where jake horse snatched 137 kilos off of the two box position five months before he ever snatched 141 from the floor but the key was he was struggling to feel those knees come underneath the bar so now when those knees are underneath the bar and he finishes nice and vertical that transfers really really well over to that full lift but again it's a key factor here what is the position from the full snatch going to look like if we want those knees to be forward when the bar is above the knee then we need to start in that same position if we want the chest over the bar and the knees forward and our heels grounded we need to start the accessory from that position we need the accessory movement we need the variation movement to mimic what we want our technique to look like based off of our technical model so two box snatch is great make sure that the bar is starting above the knee right around the reciprocation point and that's going to help the lifter learn how to push those knees forward while applying force into the heels and finishing nice and vertical Finally, what's that last key position, right? We've got to catch the snatch. We have to get into a smooth catch position. And so a lot of lifters might struggle off the hip into the catch. And there's various reasons for this. Their chest might be going too far behind the bar. Uh, they might be getting up on the toes a bit early, which bumps everything forward. They don't have an active upper body. But one of the biggest mistakes that I see, and if you're in the warm-up room, in the back room, or in your, you're in the training hall at a, at a U.S. national meet, you can see lifters jumping their feet all over the place, stomping like crazy, almost basically like marking their territory, stomping as hard as they can, making sure everybody hears how fast they're moving. But the problem becomes, most lifters aren't athletic enough to be able to jump their feet all over the place and they shouldn't be doing that if we watch someone like Lu Zhaojun or Norik Vardanian or Yuri Vardanian when they would lift when they snatch their feet just slide right out same with Quo she just slides those feet right into that catch position and the whole premise here is based around physics the longer we are in a grounded position the more we can apply force back into the ground, which is gonna help us lift the bar. The sooner we get our feet grounded, the sooner we can absorb that force. And that's a key concept. If our feet are in the air, we can't absorb the force. So we're just waiting for it to smash us, right? So a really good exercise that I like to utilize is a snatch balance, something where we get a nice drive vertically and then drop into the hole. But what this shows us, I like to just show athletes minimally hey this is how you do a snatch balance right here but what i like to see is what do they do with their feet are their feet jumping all over the place are they going really wide are they staying narrow are they barely doing anything or are they jumping like crazy what that does then is when we're doing the snatch balance if i have a lifter who tends to jump all over the place if i have a lifter doing a, a snatch balance and they're doing a no feet snatch balance they'll start doing weights that are 30 40 50 kilos over their best normal snatch but the reason why this happens is they're grounded and they're not moving their feet in that snatch balance position. They have a nice 
connection to the ground so they can absorb that force very rapidly. They can absorb the weight very quickly. So now the, the whole goal then, we can do some no feet snatch balances. Now let's move our feet and let's think about sliding our feet into that catch position and not jumping our feet into the catch position. So then over time, as they learn how to slide their feet into the catch position from a snatch balance, they start to feel more comfortable with that position of catching. And what happens then? Now, when we start to work on our pulls, then that pull position and that catch position starts to be less jumpy. They start to transition that snatch balance foot movement over to their full snatch. And that's a key concept. Remember, all of these variations have to be executed with the thought in mind of how should the movement look from a full position. It can't just be a random exercise that we're gonna do. It has to be done with a specific purpose that's gonna transfer well to the competitive movement. And in this case, that's gonna be the snatch. So to go back over, we're gonna do that lift off off the floor, put it back down, and then do that full snatch. Then the next exercise we're gonna do is a low hang snatch with a pause just below the knee. The next movement that we're gonna focus on is gonna be that two box snatch with a bar is gonna be just above that knee position. We wanna feel the knees flexed. We wanna feel hip flexion and a flat foot as we pull off the boxes. And then finally, we're gonna work on snatch balances, focusing on those feet sliding. Work with those four exercises and your snatch is gonna drastically improve. If you need help with a snatch-based program, an entire program that's gonna help you blow up your snatch, click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com and pick up our Stronger Snatch training program. If you want more information about periodization, pick up our Parabolic Periodization book and course. If you want more videos about snatch technique, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.